What is going on guys? Welcome back to the Revenge channel. Um, hope you guys all really enjoyed our last build, the aluminum body Razorback. Really, really fun guitar. I'm playing that quite a bit. Um, it's probably my go-to guitar right now, which actually I'm pretty stoked on because I thought it was more so creating a wall of them more than anything else, but it came out great. But today we have to continue building on my 50 ton hydraulic sheet metal brake. You know, that thing makes me money, so I guess it's time to mature and do mature things. Um, for you guys that are just tuning in, uh, we're actually taking this 50 inch swag off road finger brake kit. We're actually upgrading it from three 20 ton hydraulic, ear over hydraulics jacks, and we're actually putting it to uh, 250 ton hydraulic cylinders. Um, in previous episodes, I have showed you guys the cylinders we will be running. If you want to check those videos out, I'll probably link it in the description below. Um, but today, I want to kind of get everything loose and leave mocked up because I need to do a custom order on hose, all my hydraulic hose lengths. But uh, well, first and foremost, I think I might just start with this hydraulic tank. This tank was actually up to my own ends and uh, it was being used quite a few years, so I figured it was a great project to utilize around and save a few dollars in the, wrong, in the whole build. But, so as you probably noticed, I actually went ahead and I actually tried to put it in my um, glass cabinet, but I believe the grate I'm running is a little bit too slight for this, it's not aggressive enough. I usually run a lot of um, aluminum oxide because on fresh materials such as aluminum and such as fresh mild steel, it's, it's aggressive enough that it's got to etch and the material will stick to it, but it's not aggressive enough that it's just going to eat away the material too badly. So went ahead and it just wasn't aggressive enough to take all this heavy green paint off. So unfortunately I think we're going to be stuck with flapper wheels and wire wheels for now just to clean it up. So I went ahead with the water wheel, cleaned everything up, just gave it that roll up texture. I'm not going to try to get every bit of paint off this because we'll be here for... So I got to go ahead now and actually drill a hole here for the uh, feed line. This one up here where it sits high on our tank, that's actually just going to be our return. The return will come in here and we'll feed out through here. I'll start by utilizing this uh, bone right here where it's right at the bottom, but I think where this is just 3E, I'm just, it's easier just to blow a hole here and use that one for a drain or something like that. Um, another thing I want to point out to you guys, these water wheels, if you guys ever use these, you got to be super careful if you've never used them before. They're essentially just water that's twisted up, and they are excellent tools I use them religiously. They, they're really good at taking off slag, they're really good at taking, you know, roughing everything up, but they will actually, um, as you can see, I'm trying to figure, they actually fly off and they will stick in your clothing. So definitely wear gloves, definitely wear you know a heavy coat. Um, because they will pierce you. And they're, you know, I mean you're going to spend at thousands of RPMs, and that's probably spending at 17,000 RPMs. So definitely, definitely keep an eye on those. So how I'm gonna drill this hole, I think I might just get my mag drill set up and just drill a quick hole in this. I was gonna use the plasma cutter to blow a hole, but I'm trying to keep as much contaminants out of the tank as possible. It's it's definitely going to need a very, very thorough cleaning for sure. There will be an inline filter on all this as well, so that's not a huge deal, but the less crap you can keep out of your hydraulic system, definitely the better. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and sell it on mag drill and show you guys how to utilize that. So what we have here, guys, it's a magnetic drill. So essentially, it has this big magnetic base on the bottom where you can, if you had to drill into the chassis rail or into an I-beam upside down, really, really stout magnet. And uh, you can just turn it on and like I say, it's pretty stout. But the one thing that I do find about these mag drills is made for like a heavier steel. So if you had to play a piece of sheet metal that's one eighth thick or thinner, essentially what this wants to do is push the material away as opposed to drill through it. Um, I'm going to try with this, where we have this ridge and everything here, this should be pretty stout to drill through, but really not the ideal tool for thinner gauge materials. I 
going to place this bung in, in a location that, you know, I can get a nice heavy weld around the seal. But I also want to put it in a location that's kind of low down and I can angle the tank towards it. So it will always have uh, hydraulic fluid feeding in my pump. So I think that's a pretty great spot right there. Another thing about this as well is that baggy clothing, this will grab you and suck you in. It's really high power for motor. Not really sure of horsepower on it, but you can definitely do damage quick. Lay it on the floor because uh, usually if you have an egg, you'll lay it up somewhere so they look on the floor anyways if you don't have an egg now. We always put a quick pass around those two bombs. Um, one thing you can probably hear in the video is really, I want to say spattery sounding. It actually came out good. And what it was, there was a little bit of this red primer left in around there. I tried to clean off the best of food, but it burned through. Uh, one thing with me is that it really, really likes to be clean. And unfortunately, I never had to clean it off at that point. But it burned through, it was a nice seal. I have no issues with that, 110% seal. Uh, that one came out nice as well. Um, one thing that I will tell you about, about these bungs is that when they're actually shipped, they're mild steel. And to be honest, now that I think about it, they may even be a cold roll type of steel or a stamp, maybe. Not really sure. But they are shipped with like an oil coating to prevent rusting. So as you're welding, that will burn off. And as you can probably see by the air in here now, it is very, very, uh, very smoky. Probably not great on your lungs.
But I think that should be cool for there. I might just wipe this down with some wax and degrease maybe. And uh, just give it a quick coat of paint. I think that'll be good enough for our, our gel tank. So guys, you can see I got my uh, makeshift paint booth kind of set up here. I'm actually just going to wipe this down with wax and grease. Remember to take any oily residue off from the paint and whatever is left over. Um, just hit it with some high build enamel. I'm not going to get too picky with it, but uh, I think that'll be good enough for our tank. Now that I have the paint kind of cleaned up on the bottom of this tank, um, just look at these factory wells here. And I, I don't know if QC was out sick or if there was lack of QC or if it was a Friday evening at, you know, 4.55 and they got off at five or what, but uh, definitely not the prettiest. I'm wondering if I'm gonna just clean this up and run another bead over it. I mean, on the other side of the coin, it was, like this for ever since it was made probably back you know 30 40 years ago and i don't think it was leaking so maybe i'll just leave well enough alone and uh, not shoot myself in the foot like i usually do restoration I guess you could call it. Um, you definitely have to pick your own battles as you can see I could have spent a lot more time up here buffed all that old paint off and made it a really smooth surface. Um, if you were going to go that far you almost have to come in here with like um, polyban or some type of filler and take the pitting and everything out of it if you were going to go that far because there are there were quite a few little nicks and dents and a little bit of rust areas where it's pitted so you kind of got to decide how far do you want to go with something. For a holding tank that's going to be in a little sh little fab shop, good enough. But um, let that cure just a little bit further. Um, might just go ahead and try to get my rams installed. Um, so guys, I kind of have this rig with uh, it's an endless sling, essentially just one giant loop if you guys are kind of not familiar with that. Uh, I put one end, swallow the cylinder that comes out and I just kind of put like a half hitch up here to keep it tight. Um, seems pretty stable. I think that should be fine just to get it up. I'm going to kind of guide it into place and uh, just slide the pin across. I may just put one in for now just for the reason that uh, I had to take it all the way back down again and uh, do a few more measurements. I think I kind of messed up in the measurement now that I'm looking at it. I didn't take into account that this cylinder only has a 10 inch stroke. So what that means is that when this is fully maxed out, it's full potential, this only comes out of the brand body 10 inches. And uh, I'm gonna take a few more measurements and see if I can get away with the height that it's set up there now. If not, I may have to drop that top beam down probably 10 or 12 inches. Um, pretty good thing because I never welded it out solid. I kinda wanna just mock everything up and make sure that everything was gonna work for me. So maybe a good save on my part, maybe not. It actually went in place fairly easily, I must say. Um, the one thing that I thought was going to happen was I didn't have enough headroom, which essentially the hook where that was hooked on this was just up against the body of the chain file itself. Um, that did happen, but I just had enough to kind of swivel that into place. Worked out really great. Um, I think I'm just going to put one up for now because this kind of gives me an idea of how long my return line is going to be, how long my feed line's got to be. Um, the length of line that's going to be in here. And now I can better see that I think I'm going to have to drop this top beam because the one thing that I messed up on, I thought this had more of a stroke than 10 inches for some reason. But once again, this is only going to come out of your cylinder 10 inches. So that's all the stroke you're going to have on this hydraulic cylinder. So by the time 10 inches, I mean, you're only probably right here. I'm not going to have enough uh, cylinder, I guess you would say, to be able to bend a piece of plate. So I think I'm going to have to drop that down, unfortunately. Um, but other than that, 
I think I'm going to go ahead and just get all the measurements. And on the next video, you guys, hopefully we'll be able to get this functioning. Um, the hydraulic motor and everything's already set up for it. Um, I'm going to take measurements. I'm going to call and get some holes, lengths, and everything straight away. Hopefully in the next video, we'll be able to bend something with this. And if these work fine, we're going to go ahead and we're going to dismantle the, uh, the air over hydraulic one. But uh, that's going to be a wrap for today's video. If you like what you've seen, please give it a like, please give it a share, comment, do what you do best. And uh, this is the type of stuff you're probably going to be seeing on this channel a lot. After this build, we have a few more builds in there. You're going to be seeing a couple cars. We have um, a BMW M3, E46, and CTSV V2, manual six car. So definitely some content coming at you guys. Um, like I said, give us a like, give us a share, and I really appreciate you guys watching today. See you on the next one.